Hello, everyone, and welcome. Good evening. Good evening, Taylor. Good evening. Uh, I am Jordan. I'm from Illumilite. I'm the maker and educator here. I'm going to take you through some stuff. And I have Taylor with me as well. Yes. And I will be asking Jordan all of your questions, making sure they get answered. And like Jordan said, our Illumilite team will also be in there answering any questions you might have. Um, we'll make sure to help you out. Yes, absolutely. So if you're here, it means that you signed up for this class and you're excited to find out what this whole resin thing is about, or maybe you already know what this whole resin thing is about and you wanna learn some new techniques. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to take you through uh, some basics of how to use resin. That is our amazing clear cast that you can get at Michael's. And I'm gonna show you some fun techniques that we can do it. And I'm gonna show you that by doing four different coasters in this hour. So I'll take my time, I'll go slow, and we'll have plenty of time to answer questions throughout. If you got them, once again, put them in the chat and we'll get them answered right away. So are we ready, Taylor? I think we're ready. Let's do it. Ready. Where'd you get all this stuff? You know what, Taylor? I got all this stuff from Michaels. Everything that you see here today is going to be from Michaels. I walked the stores myself. I pulled things off the shelf myself and brought it all here for you today. So I've got our amazing clear cast. That is the resin that we'll be using, which is the star of the show today, if you ask me. Uh, we're gonna have some glitter. We're gonna do a glitter coaster. I'm gonna show you how to work with glitter in two different ways. We're gonna use these alcohol inks. If you've never used alcohol inks before, it is, it's fun. It is It's fun. one of my favorite things to do. So we're gonna use alcohol inks today. I'm gonna use uh, a couple seashells and some of these little stones here and show you how to use uh, heavier things to make inclusions within a coaster. So it's a cool little scene is what I'll make. Uh, and then, this guy right here is some, actually, it's thermal powder. So with heat, it changes colors. We're going to use this therm thermal powder and this Cricut machine over here real quick to actually use vinyl and do a vinyl inclusion too. So a lot of different techniques, a lot of questions. If you got them, share them, no worries here. But let's go ahead and start. I'm going to actually, Taylor, if that's okay, I'm going to give you these I things. Get these out of the way. And we're going to cover some basics real quick. So first thing we're gonna do is mix up some resin. But before we just go ahead and mix up some resin, we gotta talk about safety real quick. So we use what's called PPE, personal protective equipment. And in this instance, that is gonna be safety glasses. What I got right here, which are prescription. I know you were wondering, they are prescription. And these gloves, I use nitrile gloves. Uh, that's just a preference, but some type of gloves. You don't want this going all over our hands and causing a big mess. So safety first. Now, the other thing that you might wanna consider is a respirator. If you're in a very small space, uh, we recommend that you at least consider using a respirator while you're mixing and using epoxy. If you're in a much larger space, like the one that we are actually in right now, which has plenty of ventilation, then you can consider you know, not doing that. So we're not gonna do that today because we know we're being safe. So if you're wondering if you should do it or not, if you're in debate, just wear the respirator and be extra safe. So we're walking forward in confidence, knowing we're good to go. So you're not gonna see me wearing one throughout this class. I think that's a good idea. Splashed in my eyes. You never know. I mix very intensely, so. Better safe. Better safe than sorry is right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take our resin out of the box. It comes with a couple small cups that you can mix with along with a couple small sticks and some instructions. But we're not gonna use those sticks or those instructions today because, well, you're, you're hanging with me this evening. So you don't need them. They do come in handy though. They do. If you need them for reference, perfect. So this is the resin. You have an A side and a B side. It's a two part material that you're gonna mix equal by volume, one to one. So to mix equal by volume, we're gonna use uh, a measuring cup that is what we call graduated. So let me grab one of those real quick. This is a graduated measuring cup. And you can actually see within there, let me move this for you. You can actually see within the graduated measuring cup that we've got our different ounce marks here. That's gonna allow us to measure and mix very, very accurately. If we didn't have this, we'd be kind of eyeballing it and that's no good. You wanna make sure you're mixing pretty much as exact as possible, especially in smaller amounts. It's not. Not good to do that, not good to off mix. So we got our stuff ready to go. Let's start the mixing process. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the B side. That is the clearer side. 
It's just a little foil cap inclusion. I'm going to use this stir stick that I have just to kind of tear through that foil. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up some epoxy. Well, how much do I need to mix up? That's probably what you're wondering right now. Well, doing a little bit of calculations, we have these coasters. Could you hand me that box of those? So these coasters are from Michael's. It comes in a really simple set of three coasters. There's a square, a circle, and then a one, two, three, four, five, six hexagon. <laughs> Bear with me, a hexagon. And what we found is that each one of these is approximately four to six ounces, the circle being about uh, maybe three ounces, and then the square being maybe closer to like five or six ounces. So as we go through this process, know that. So if you're mixing up for one particular shape, it's going to be about that ounce mark. So for the first one we're going to do, we're going to start with the inclusion. And that we're going to actually use the square. So I'm going to mix up for that square about six ounces, but I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to mix enough for the next one I'm doing as well. Good idea. So it's going to be six ounces for that square mold. Would you hand me a square mold, Taylor? Actually, you already did hand me this square mold. So that's what we're going to do our inclusion in. And then I'm going to mix up a few more ounces for another one later. But so for now, I'm going to go, I'm going to do eight ounces total. So I'm starting with that B side here. Let me make sure you have a great view of that. And I'm just going to go up to the four ounce mark because we are mixing up eight. As you get close to that four ounce mark, pull back a little bit because that level will rise just a tiny bit. And there we go. There's four ounces. I'm pretty sure I'm exactly on the line. That doesn't always happen, everybody. So, He's a professional. all right. And now for the A side. This side is going to feel a little bit thicker to you. Don't panic. There's nothing wrong there. You're just going to have to take your time. When we combine these two, when we mix them thoroughly, it becomes a nice, wonderful consistency and nice and even too. So, so four ounces of the B side. Now I'm doing four ounces of this A side as well. And I'm actually, if you can tell, I'm actually looking at an angle um, down into the mixing container from a, a little bit, a little bit of distance away. So I'm not just breathing in those resin fumes. There we go. I think I'm gonna write it about eight ounces. Question for you. Fire away. Could you measure four in one cup, four in another cup, and then combine those together? What a fantastic question. Uh, I do not recommend doing that. And here's why. If you add resin to one cup, four ounces, and add resin to, you know, the A side to one cup, excuse me, yep. and the B side to another cup, and you measure it up to four ounces, you're going to mix those into a third container. Well, a lot of that resin and the hardener, the A and the B side, is actually going to cling to the walls of those two cups that you've measured. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting that accuracy because there's going to be some left over and in different amounts depending on which cup. That makes sense. So you got to, if using it in one cup and mixing that way, I find to be a lot more accurate, uh, a lot easier. There is a method for thorough mixing that I can talk about, yeah. which is called the double cupping method. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing this epoxy and I'll explain that method as well. Um, basics of mixing epoxy is, uh, taking your time, go slow. You want to give this about four to six minutes, uh, and you want to fold this over. So I'm going to tilt this towards you so you can see it a little bit. Uh, I'm actually taking this and I'm actually folding it over itself. I'm scraping the sides, taking my time. I'm going to rotate the cup. I'm getting a nice, even mix this way. And it looks really cloudy. Well, at this moment, don't panic. We just started mixing. This will clear up. We just got to give it time. Got to mix it thoroughly. So scrape the sides as you're mixing. Scrape the bottom. We don't want any uncombined part A or part B that's kind of hanging out there that we aren't catching. We want to mix as completely thoroughly as possible. So let's say that you're just not feeling confident. I'm going to keep mixing this, but if, let's say you're not feeling confident like, I don't know if I've got everything combined appropriately. I'm just not sure. That's really important. We want to make sure. What you can do is what's called the double cupping method. You can combine your, your ounces here, eight ounces, mix it as thoroughly as you can, and then get another cup completely, pour that mm. resin into that other cup, yep. and don't scrape the cup you've poured from. Mm. Let it be. Okay. Just leave it. All that uncombined material is going to hang on those walls and is not going to go into our new well-mixed cup. 
then you can just mix that cup for another 60 seconds or so and you're going to have a perfect mix every time and if i pour it out of that cup and wanted to reuse it could i say wipe it out with alcohol or you know something similar so that a cup isn't being wasted the cup that we've we've poured away from yeah there's going to be some uncombined epoxy in there um that's a really good question actually uh i would actually try to remix what's in that cup uh, and try to get that as combined as possible. Um, but it's not something where, sorry, I'm just gonna make sure this is okay. clearing up a little bit faster for me. I'm gonna go ahead and stir a little bit harder. Uh, it's not something where you wanna just re reuse that cup as is. You really wanna mm -hmm. clean it out if possible. And the best way to clean out epoxy is making sure actually everything is combined. Interesting. Yes. So if it's cured, you can kind of pop if it out. If it's cured, you can yeah. pop it right out, but you want to make sure it's completely mixed together. All right. Now, if you mix slowly and you fold over, you're not going to have a ton of air uh, included in here, but we are going to use a, uh, a heat gun uh, to release some of this air. You can grab a hairdryer, a heat gun, torches. There's a lot of ways that you can do it. A fine alcohol mist is another Even way too. Even a lighter, yeah. Yeah, even a lighter, the, the, long, yep. the longer ones. Yep those work perfectly too. So, so All right. I don't think we're using any dye tonight, but at what point in the process, if you wanted to color your resin, would you add that? Great question. If you wanted to color your resin, you're actually gonna to wanna to use the dye after you thoroughly mix everything. If you use the dye beforehand, well, it's gonna be really hard to tell if you've got everything thoroughly mixed mm -hmm. and combined. So one of the, brings me actually to a good point, Taylor. One of the key factors that we're looking for uh, when we're mixing is a lack of uh, swirls. You can see when you're mixing that there are swirls of the A side and the B side. They don't quite look exactly the same. So you wanna continue mixing for that four to six minutes and until there are no visible swirls either. So scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, removing all those swirls. If we added color to let's say the B side before we started mixing, mm -hmm. it'd be much harder to see those swirls It'd be harder to tell if we've got everything combined. That makes a lot of sense. Another one more mixing tip for everybody here is actually scraping the stick. You want to do this perpendicular to the actual lid of your mixing cup and get all, all sides. Doesn't seem like it, but that is a side of a mixing stick. Get all of those sides and then remix that epoxy into your mixture because some uncombined resin will hang on that cup. So, all right, we are looking good. That is eight ounces of mixed epoxy. Amazing. Perfect. So I'm going to use this square mold. We're going to do the inclusion first. We'll slide this just to the side here. Get that mold got going. Some shells for you. As got well some shells. Stones. Some shells and some stones. We picked these up from Michael's. This was a, uh, these were a part of a smaller kind of batch of mixed uh, nautical Yeah, some shells, items. some crabs, some uh, starfish, I think, were in there. Yep. I bet someone on our team will send a link through to them very shortly. Absolutely. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. All right. So I am going to go ahead and get rid of this mixing stick here. All right. We're good to go. It's time for the inclusion. So I'm only going to use uh, a little bit of this, about six ounces total but i'm just going to pour a very small base of this and you can see it just kind of flows right in there would you like me to grab the torch you know what let's grab seven. yeah let's grab the heat gun, heat gun would you right over there in the top and then a battery from the charger Absolutely. perfect we'll show that technique as well so now i haven't i haven't poured this completely to the top i think matt's showing us matt is our videographer he's with us tonight helping run these cameras so uh, I haven't poured all the way to the top here. I've left a little bit of room. Um, that's because I've I've got this kind of granulated these these stones and these shells. And since I'm going to add them, that's going to increase the volume that's within this coaster, and I don't want it to overflow. overflow. So I'm going to add these first. Then I'm going to top it off with epoxy if I need to. So here's a little trick I learned while I was prepping for this class. Instead of pouring straight from the large container. <laughs> If you use the lid, you won't have uh, catastrophes like I've had previously. So Good half for everyone there. There it is. So I'm going to focus on just a corner. And because these are rocks, they are going to sink to the bottom. That's OK. That's the cool look that we're going for. But I'm just going to kind of tap gently. I can even spread these out with my finger if I want and kind of get them over there. Yep. And I've got a gloved hand, so I'm not scared of the epoxy. But it will cause a little bit of a mess if it's settling on your fingers and 
all that. So just be be smart. Do you have to stir those in anything like that or are they just going to sink? Good question. They will sink slowly. I am actually going to kind of mix them in a little bit. I'm also going to put these shells in. Oh, I'm actually going to put those shells in on the edge, believe it or not. Ooh, cool. So I'm going to grab just a, a smaller stir stick, one of these that comes within your kit. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of poke these down a little bit into the sides and into the edge. The epoxy is in, in this situation is going to be like glue to these rocks. They're not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay exactly where we put them and they're not going to come off of the coaster either. So I've cleared just a little path right there. Look at that. Guess what's going right there, our shells. Perfect. Now I have made sure that these shells are a little bit shorter than the height of our coaster. Otherwise this coaster would, would teeter and it wouldn't be balanced. So that's an important piece there. All right, I've got my little shells, my little sand scene here. And when this is all done and cured, it'll be hopefully fun to see. Now, if you gotta keep in mind when you're doing any type of uh, casting that the object that you're doing is most likely upside down. Mm. So if you think about it, this yep. coaster technically right now is upside down from what it will be when it's finished. So all I'm gonna do is make sure I have the shells how I want them for the end product when it's upside or right makes side sense. up actually. It makes sense. So I've got one, I flipped them. So two of them are right side up and then one I want upside down actually. So there we go, a very, very simple, putting some rocks in, adding some seashells, getting it how I want it. That's it, straightforward. Now we're not quite filled up as much as I want us to be. And I'm actually gonna go just to the side here. I'm not gonna pour directly onto those rocks. I want the epoxy to flow over them a little bit more organically and naturally. If I just poured the epoxy straight onto those rocks, those rocks might spread out, might go away from where I've put them strategically. So. Just taking my time here, not trying to overfill this. There we go. All right. Perfect. There it is. So if you think about it, we've been here for how long? A not few, very. not very long. <laughs> and how, how difficult has this been so far? Also not very. Not very difficult at all. So and with a- I want that. Right? Because it's very summery. So out of nowhere, you can end up with just a little bit of effort, a little bit of time and have an incredible coaster that comes out of it. So we wanna get rid of this air that's in here. You can use a heat gun like I've got here to kind of pop those bubbles. Uh, but like I said, there are a lot of other things that you could do, a torch, the, the kitchen lighter is another one. And you just have to be cognizant of things like this. If a uh, heat gun like this or a hair dryer is being used, there's a lot of air that's being pushed. So pushing air means pushing epoxy. So if we had colors, let's say, this would suddenly start to move those colors around. But there we go. You can get most of the air out. And we have formulated our epoxy as well to have fantastic air release naturally too. So it's gonna come out fantastic. All right, one coaster is already done, folks. We can move on to another one. How about we do uh, the vinyl with the heat transfer one, if that works. Yep, I All right. like that. Use I'm gonna, the cricket, show yeah, it off let's, a bit. Use, let's use the cricket. <laughs> I'm gonna slide that coaster over there in Perfect. front of you, just so you can see it. To knock it over. Thank you. All right, this extra epoxy that I mixed up is an extra because we're doing the next coaster. Yes. So how about a circular coaster? Can do. Let's do, yeah, that one right there. there All right, so this is gonna be our base for that vinyl included coaster. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use vinyl, I'm gonna use glitter, and I'm gonna use the thermal powder as well. So we're gonna do a bunch of stuff at once. But I'm gonna start by adding some glitter to this epoxy that we've got here ready to mix up. What color would you like? Oh man. We've got a plethora. <laughs> we've got a, a, a Michael's has a ton of glitter options. This is a, a really nice, simple variety pack that they have. Um, One of our favorites. We go through a lot of glitter. We go through here. a ton of glitter. <laughs> it is a little bit of the bane of my existence because it does go everywhere. It does. So, you know, there's always a good amount of sweeping afterwards, but it's worth it. This though, this stuff right here, this is my favorite one from this bunch. Absolutely. I'm gonna give this back to you if that's all right. Of course. 
this is this it's like really reflective really translucent really high shine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this top if i can there we go and i'm going to just add a little bit into our epoxy right here and then we're going to stir this in if you're wondering how much to add it depends on what you're going for how much translucent you know visibility that you want within your coaster always start with less and then add more later because you can always add but you cannot take away so i'm going to give that a quick mix i've got a great question for oh you, you do coming from ashley all right ashley what's Need the question some help on how to keep big chunky glitter suspended in your resin not settling keeping it floating in there Keeping it floating. Good question. Uh, so for, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this glitter while I answer Ashley's <laughs> question here. Never okay. enough. Never, Never enough, glitter. enough glitter. So if you've got large, heavy glitter, this glitter is gonna stay suspended very, very easily. But if you have heavier glitter uh, and you add it right when you started mixing your epoxy, uh, this epoxy has what we call uh, an open time, how much time you have before it needs to be where it's going to be at the end, right? It's gonna start to harden and it's gonna start to heat up. Uh, if you wait to add heavier, chunkier glitter until later in the open time, there's not a ton of time for that glitter to sink to the bottom because it's going to start to gel. It's going to start to mm -hmm. harden. So timing of when you add certain things to your actual mixture is a huge part of this. It, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty complicated thing and it's pretty nuanced. So that might be, I would consider that like an in, intermediate question maybe. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good question. It is a good question. Very good question. All right, I've got this glitter added to the amount that I like. I'm gonna bring my coaster back into frame here. And what I'm gonna do for this particular design is I'm just gonna fill this coaster up uh, half-ish half way. I'm gonna say half-ish. Half -ish. Maybe a little over or a little under? What I'm, are you feeling? You know what, here's, here's actually what I'm feeling. What I want is I want extra volume uh, on the top, but I do want a little mm -hmm. tiny layer that covers this middle hump here this yep. is that's important to cover so this is the first half of this kind of vinyl and glitter pour uh, I cheated a little bit and I did prep one ahead of time because normally you want this to cure up before we do this next step so if you're doing this at home you got to now wait uh, about 24 hours before you come back and do this next step we're going to do but like I said I cheated I'll change you I cheated and I used, uh, and I got one prepped already. You can see this is hardened up and ready to go. And I used a different glitter, I was trying things out. So <laughs> we are on to phase two of this uh, glitter. I'm gonna move this epoxy real quick. So same glitter, almost full pour. Almost a full pour, not quite. We want a little bit of room for that backing. And this is where we're gonna use uh, a machine that I have gotten to know recently called the Cricut. The Cricut. The Cricut. Michaels has a phenomenal amount of technical information and tutorials on how to use the Cricut, how to get started with the Cricut. And we've watched pretty a, much all of those A lot videos. of them. A lot of those. You know, I had a lot of frustrations that I was just, I was stubborn and I didn't watch the videos <laughs> when I should have. You know, that's really what happened. Yeah. Uh, so if you've never used a Cricut before, those videos will really help you get started. We're going to jump a, a few steps ahead. I've actually printed out... Uh, a few things here, I've got transfer paper and I've got uh, just some simple white vinyl with my initials and then a circle on here as well. So we're gonna transfer this onto this coaster uh, with the uh, transfer paper. And the one thing I'll note before we get going here is you'll notice these letters look a little funky and they're probably hard for you to see. Maybe I can tilt it up yeah. for you here. Might be a little bit easier. There it's we go. Better. You can kind of see that now there's a J, an L and an S. but they're backwards. That is, believe it or not, very intentional because we're going to be applying this vinyl on top of this coaster and then we're going to be flipping it over up this, what looks like upside down when we're done. This is actually the finished coaster. So we want it to be a mirrored set of letters to make sure it actually reads correctly. Mm. Matt just let us in on a little tip. Oh yeah? Yes, Zoom mirrors everything to the audience so those letters look correct to them. Well, I just sounded like I lied to everybody. <laughs> not a liar. Not a liar. Shepherd, not a liar. It is, it is backwards to me, I promise you. 
So I'm just gonna put this transfer paper on here so that you guys can see. This is very easy. I did not know about transfer paper when I started using vinyl. You're welcome for teaching you. <laughs> Taylor helped me with that. I had a couple breakdowns that she saved me from, so that was great. I've also got this circle. That one can't be backwards, thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, but I've got the circle as well. So I'm going to do a circle and then with my initials in it, which is something we've seen out there a fair amount. We wanted to teach you how to do it. All right. So if I do this right, this vinyl should I've kept my gloves on here, but there we go. So the vinyl comes off onto the transfer paper. The coaster comes back in and then we're just going to eye up center ish here. You can take your time, lay it down. Make sure you don't have any creases or anything like that, which I don't think I do. Pull off this transfer paper and the vinyl stays on there. Perfect. That's why you want it fully cured. That's why you want it fully cured. This would be a nightmare if I tried to put vinyl on a uncured epoxy, would not yes. go well. All right, next thing is these letters, which need a little bit more smoothing over. If you didn't have a Cricut, mm -hmm. let's say, could you do this with just paper? What would you recommend? What would I recommend? Trying otherwise. Good question. Really good question, actually. Um, if you don't have a vinyl or a Cricut, I am also struggling with these, by the way. I'm here to help as needed. Please help. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll answer the question <laughs> while we do that. Uh, if you don't have a Cricut or if you don't have a vinyl, if you use just regular paper, let's say like printer paper that you might be used to, well, it's going to soak up a lot of the epoxy and it's not going to go well. So you want something that uh, isn't necessarily uh, going to get like damp and wet and soggy. So painting is something that you can do as well, actually. So if you let this cure, you could paint and then pour the other layer on top of it. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, I'm not a good painter, so it took her like two seconds, everyone. That's <laughs> embarrassing. Here we are. All right, so I'll go ahead and get my monogram here. I'll let everybody guess what my middle name is. We won't reveal that. <laughs> I'll let you know what comes through the oh, chat. Oh boy, that's a good question. And then we got our letters down there. Then I'm actually gonna have Taylor again because my gloves are hindering me. Could you peel Absolutely. that peel that paper off for me? Oh, that's really sticky. Thank goodness she's here. <laughs> awesome. All right. So there you go. There is our what looks like right side up to you, but backwards to us vinyl on there. And we use the cricket. And when every time I use the cricket, folks, it takes me maybe five minutes worth of time. So great tool. Michaels carries them. Absolutely go for it. Highly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. Now, we don't have any epoxy left, so we got to mix up another batch. So I'm going to mix up uh, the rest of the epoxy that I need for the night, actually. Yeah, we're going to make a couple more coasters. we got more well. to do. So I'm going to get out a little bit bigger of a graduated container here. You can see that we've got a larger amount of ounces here. And I'm going to actually need about 16, 14, 16. I've got 16 right here. That's perfect. And I put my epoxy right here. And this is the same mixing process as before. So I'm going to go eight ounces on this first part, the B side, and then up to 16 ounces on the A side. All right. Perfect. So let's see. Got it. There's the A side coming in. And we'll take that all the way up to 16 ounces. Slow up as you get closer to that line so you can really make sure you got an accurate pour. And perfect. Excellent. Okay. Now it's mixing time. Taylor, are there any questions that people are just people dying are to just know? People are really into putting things in resin. Yeah. They want to know about crayon shavings. Go for it. Yeah. Mica powders. Oh, there's an entire wall behind me. There is, and it looks beautiful. <laughs> Let's see. What else do we have? People love glitter. Yep. So do we. Can't go wrong there. We do. 
pigments, dyes. Pigments, dyes. We're going to show you alcohol links, which uh, was newer for me in recent days. And let me tell you, quite the journey there. Yeah. But Less of a dye alcohol ink. Right? Less of a more dye. Of yeah, it actually, I think, falls more on the like inclusion side yes. of things, right? It, it does its own thing within the epoxy, and you're going to see that a little bit later. So as I'm mixing this up, what we are going to do is we're going to finish this coaster right here. And we're going to do that by adding some thermal powder to it. I do have a quick question about mixing. Since yeah. Since you're doing that currently. That's right. Does it matter what side you pour into the cup first? Does it matter if mm. it's A and then B, B and then A? Mm. Is it personal preference? Good question. So it, technically speaking, does not matter. Uh, from a preference standpoint, I will say I highly recommend pouring B first, like I've done both times here today. Uh, because the B side is a little bit thinner, it won't stick to the walls as much. The A side, which is a little bit thicker initially, does stick to the wall. So if you poured the A side first, what you'd end up having is a lot more material hanging on the walls that you have to scrape out. So you'll end up with a great result either way. Yeah. It's not a problem. Just a little bit easier on yourself. Just a little bit easier, you know? Sure. If you're using resin, it's just nice to go easier. Yes. I am going to open this thermal powder for you. Please do. Since you still have gloves on. You know, I'm being safe. You are. Mix epoxy. But I can't imagine wear gloves. opening small plastic bags with gloves. On. I don't want to put everybody through that tonight. So, this is the spin it thermal powder, which changes colors with heat, which is fun for a toaster. If you put a hot mug, a cold mug on it, take it outside, all that good stuff. That's right. All right. This is open. It is I'm open. Letting you know that. Fantastic. Thank, thank it looks you. like craft macaroni powder. It's dinner time, right? At least for us on the east on the east coast or eastern standard time, it is dinner time. All right. I've mixed my epoxy fairly quickly. If this technique seems very intense and aggressive to you, give it it, is. it, it <laughs> is, but give it time. You'll it'll become second nature mixing epoxy. You'll know what you're looking for. You'll know the feel of it in the cup. You'll be able to tell when everything's perfectly combined. So I've had a little bit of, of experience doing this. But take your time, go slow, double check everything, and you'll be successful. All right. That is our mixed up epoxy for the rest of the night. Perfect. And I'm gonna grab just a smaller paper cup. Excuse me, any paper cup will do. Uh, a small Dixie cup, like, you know, in the bathroom, like toothbrushing, yep. you're rinsing. Those work fine. Any paper cup that you could get uh, does the trick. And we don't need a lot. We need about an, uh, two ounces, I think, because we've made this about half the size of the full coaster. So we need about two ounces to finish this coaster off. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit and then pause, scrape off that edge and see how much I've poured from this side here. So I'm looking, the 16, eh, it looks like it's down to eh, maybe, maybe about 14, but I'll just do a tiny bit more, scrape off that edge and that's good to go. I've got a question for you. Fire away. If you didn't know how much epoxy goes in a coaster mold or whatever mold you're mm, using. Good question. Good way to estimate. Good way to estimate. Good way to estimate. So there's a, a, a trick that a lot of people in mold making and casting, which is uh, what we do here, uh, use, <laughs> use rice, actually. Mm. Yep. So rice, it's dry. It's not going to add moisture to your mold or anything like that. And when you add rice, to your mold, you'll get a sense of the volume. You can then take that rice from that coaster mold or from whatever mold you have, mm -hmm. and then pour it into the graduated mixing container before you add your epoxy, right? You wanna take it out and rinse it out, obviously. <laughs> but you can add it to it and see how much it's actually taken up, and then go from there. That's great advice, rice. Who would have thought? Rice, believe it or not, it's rice. I'm gonna add just a little bit, not much. This is uh, the end of a, is it tongue depressor, right? Isn't that the, yeah, the term for craft this thing? Stick craft stick Craft stick works. Just gonna add a little bit. We don't wanna overload uh, epoxy. If we overload epoxy with dyes and powders, you start messing with the chemistry. So mm. just a little bit, five to 10% of the, of the total volume, uh, you're not really gonna end up with issues until you're really pushing that inclusion. So, so I've got this in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just mix that up. Wow, orange, orange, orange. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm okay with it, because to be honest, I don't know if, Taylor, if you know this, but orange is my favorite color. Oh, you well learned... then you picked the right powder. 
who who would have thought <laughs> when i was in michael's i was like what was that blue or orange i your chose favorite orange color your initials you got a coaster just for you it feels selfish but let me tell you well it's everyone not. should do it i I, think. I agree i want one with my initials and my favorite color which is yellow 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 almost the oh. lighter color macaroni and, and cheese it's almost a two for one thermal powder here it could have been could have been all right i've got that mixed in there thoroughly i'm gonna go ahead and remove that stick so let's get our coaster back in here and we've got our vinyl down the nice thing about vinyl is we really don't have to worry about is it going to float because it's stuck down there so we're just gonna i'm gonna that start in the so middle colorful it is That's very incredible. colorful very very colorful and i'm just gonna let that flow now you'll notice the epoxy moves even though i'm just pouring in the same spot that's because epoxy is self-leveling so if you're on a work surface i've got our our workbench here today but if you're on a work surface and it's not level your epoxy is going to follow gravity it's going to follow the tilt of your work surface so make sure you're on a level working surface when you're doing this stuff all right that's that's done we got a little bit of air release to do pictures. torch heat gun Kitchen lighter, that is up to you. Your choice. Fine alcohol mist also does the trick. Just watch how much alcohol you're using. And actually, the funny thing is, now that I'm, I'm realizing this, I'm using a heat gun on this, you're going to see the gonna color change. change. Color. <laughs> Let's experience that together. Why not? We're here. You're here this evening with us. Let's have some fun. It's definitely getting lighter. It is getting lighter. I don't know. What do you think, Matt? Can they, can they see the color difference a little bit? That's all right. I also have yellow glasses on, so I'm now realizing you, everything looks different. There you go. <laughs> it's a little bit harder. Wow. Yeah, that is so much brighter. I really like this powder. Get it at Michael's, folks. It's there. Oh, there we go. I can see. Yeah, you can see now. And that looks just as good as it did with the glasses on. So. What a confidence boost. <laughs> what a confidence boost. All right, so that one is done. I'll slide that one over there. So we have our inclusion done. I've shown you some, some glitter techniques, one glitter technique and the vinyl and the actual color changing. And we've not spent a long time here. And everything we've done is less really straight. Less than 40 minutes. Less than 40 here. minutes. It's, it's really straightforward. It's really easy. And at the end of it, I'm gonna pull out the coasters that we have already done so you can see the final finished result. But it's time for phase three, our, our third technique. There's a lot of techniques, but let's call it phase three. Let's call it our third technique. And that is the alcohol inks. Yes. This is the fun one. How about a coaster mold? I think we should open that box. Should we open this box? Yeah, I think we should save this one for last. Okay. I completely and trust I you. I think we should maybe do two. To be so we bold. Two. two it is. Two it is. All right. So here is here are some fresh coasters that you can see. Ooh. Here are the three shapes. Good really, shapes. really like these. I like these a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the ooh, I'm gonna go with the circle again. <laughs> ooh, I don't know. We're going <laughs> we're going hexagon square, everyone. Right. I'm feeling the I'm feeling yeah, the variety. Okay. All right, I'm gonna bring back in uh, my mixed up epoxy. You can see it's been thoroughly mixed, and we have a half hour's worth or 45 minutes worth, depends on the temperature in your space, worth of open time. So this is still usable, still viscous, still good to go. Now with the alcohol inks. I'm just gonna get them all out. Love it, all of them. love it. Alcohol inks are a wild and crazy, fun uh, type of uh, resin technique that you can do. It's a really cool thing, but it is kind of random. You know, you can learn and try to hone things in over time and I'll show you a couple things. But show some let's show some examples. Yeah. Everything is going to come out differently yeah. depending on how you use Hold these alcohol inks. So here you go. So there is, here's an example of kind of where we're headed. We're headed for this really fun, swirly, cool looking oceany pattern here. If we did blue, that has white alcohol in it as well. And if we just do just some color alcohol inks, you can get these other cool effects as well. But you can see in both of these, the commonality they have is a lot of the coaster is actually clear. So that's where we're going to start tonight. We're actually going to take both of these coaster molds that I've got here, and we're actually going to fill them up with clear first. Ooh. Almost all the way. I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of space, mostly because I got to move these around a little bit and I don't want to be spilling over the edge at all. So I'll pour that first one. 
and then I'll pour that second one. Good news, they could see the color change. You could see the color change? In the thermal powder. Oh, that makes me so, so happy. Exciting. I wasn't going to sleep tonight. I was going to be like, they missed it. They missed it all. <laughs> they didn't get any of the color change, and it was so much fun. Should we do one with white alcohol ink and one with just colors? She's got the vision, folks. All right, it's decided. <laughs> it's decided. Love it. So I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit of air release now. Now, wait a minute, Taylor. Why am I doing it now, you ask? Yes, Don't worry. I did ask. I know you asked. I could, <laughs> I could feel it. I could feel it from now. Well, there's alcohol in this. So if you're using a, a torch or oh. a flame... Yeah, not good. Not what you want to do, right? I don't want to lose any hair. Right. No. Right. Don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. These are alcohol. Alcohol is flammable, so you don't want to use the open flame method to get rid of your air when you're using alcohol inks. It's not great. Don't do that. It will change the effect. So instead, what we'll do is use our heat gun and try to get rid of all the air, as much air as we can right now, just from the surface. Very smart. I am going to grab a torch really quick so people can see what a torch does. Yeah. It looks cool up close. It looks cool up close. Woo. That would have been terrible. So this is a, a standard torch that you could get at a, a home center or something like that. But that also gets rid of air very quickly. So just an example of what open flame would do versus a, a heated air like this heat gun here. So a lot of different options. All right. Let's talk alcohol inks. Let's get the whole rainbow here. I, was just, I think, you know, you, there's no wrong answer here, right? No. This is your coaster. This is your, it could be your gift. It could be for your desk. It could be for a loved one's desk, anything. No rules here except for orange. He's picking his favorite color. Everybody Again. be cool, okay? Again, I like no it. coaster for me, no coaster for Matt. This is my show tonight, folks. <laughs> I'm kidding. The second one is all you, Taylor. You're picking the colors. Great. But I'm going to do green and orange Ooh. for this first one here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do the square one. And this is the most straightforward, simple thing. I'm going to do half and half. So half of this piece is going to be orange and half is going to be green. So I'm going to do them both at the same time. And I'm going to go right down the middle and then around the edges so that you can see. It'll, it'll be very clear. What happens is when you drop these in here, they expand very quickly. So three, two, one, here we go. Ooh. All right. So it starts to sell up a little bit like this. It will start to combine and swirl as they start to interact with the epoxy. So it won't look like this when it's cured. If you wanted to, let's say, change it or alter it, I'm going to go ahead and change it and alter it a little bit. I'm going to grab a stir stick, you know believe it or not. Coaster. It's my coaster. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to dip this stick in there and kind of move that ink around. Mm. I just get a little bit more control this way. Uh, I might lose some of the, the clarity and some of the swooping, but that's up to you. It's your coaster. There's no wrong answer here. So I'll kind of scrape off the side there, flip the stick over and go into the green. Ah, I still got a little orange in there. That's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up for that. Not at all. All right. I like that. And this is actually going to shift and change as it cures, believe it or not. That makes a lot of sense. All right, there's my coaster, green and orange. I love it. I'm sliding it out of frame. Now it's time for Taylor's coaster. All right. We're gonna add some white. We are, and I picked purples. Put my finger in that like an idiot. There we go, I'm okay. <laughs> we're all set. You pick purples? I pick purples. We've got three purples. We Let's also have a it. lot of blues, which were a cool okay. second, but you should, like you're a going little for purple, purple variety, and then some white dropped on top. This is also alcohol ink but in a weird smaller bottle because the normal bottle is about this big that's right we'd probably spill that everywhere <laughs> if i'm being honest so we have a small dropper bottle here that jordan will kindly put on top of my coaster you've got it it's mine i'm gloved up i'm ready to go <laughs> all right i'm just gonna go for that I'm, how about random trust you. is random, random okay is good. we're going random, random. now we're going to start with the colors we're not going to start with white we're going to start with the colors and i'll tell you why that's because this white alcohol ink, believe it or not, is actually a little bit heavier. So there's a really fun effect that happens with alcohol ink when you add white to it, and that is the white actually kind of pulls it to the bottom. It actually pulls it down. Earlier when you saw that, uh, I'm gonna call it that ocean looking alcohol ink coaster, uh, that was uh, had white in it, believe it or not. And that white actually pulls the other alcohol inks along with it, makes them a little bit more opaque. 
It makes a really cool effect. So we're gonna do that. Now this one you gotta watch. This one's really, really fun. So I'm gonna take my white alcohol ink and I'm gonna cover this whole, this whole surface that you see here really quickly. I'm gonna go in a circular pattern and I'm gonna stop in the middle. Ready? Three, two, one. Ooh. Here we go. It's already just moving by itself. It's just moving. So you're going to see those colors will fold over themselves and onto each other. This is how you get that really cool organic looking uh, shape that people love with alcohol inks. So big fan of this. If you think, oh, I like that coaster as is, well, it's going to change as Sorry. this epoxy <laughs> cures, right? It'll look more like the result that we showed you a little bit earlier. Don't get too attached. Don't get too but attached it to might this be look. Cooler. It's been cooler every time it we've done it. Been. Every it time we've done mind. it. I have a question for you. Yeah, fire away. I'm going to slide this over. This epoxy up a little bit ago. We did. You know, we've made a couple coasters. We have. How much time do we have? Yeah. Before I need to pour? No. How much time? Like, how long, how long can you use that for? We mixed oh. it up 20 minutes ago, maybe? Yeah. And you notice I'm not nervous or scared at all. That's because we have what's called an open time. An open time is how long you have to actually pour and use that material. Uh, in this case, it's 35 to about 45 minutes with amazing clear cast. So it's not been more than 20 minutes. Yeah. Look at this. I've got plenty of open time still. It's nice and thin, it's nice and runny. We've got it's time. It's also pretty toasty in here. It's also pretty warm. I, I juiced the heat up to about 72. Uh, if it was really, really hot in here, if it was 90 degrees and it was in the middle of the summer, that time is going to be shorter, believe it or not. That cure time or that uh, open time, rather, is going to be uh, more in the, the, the 30 or even shorter than that, especially if you have a lot of epoxy that you've mixed up. If it's colder, let's say it's the dead of winter and you're on a porch, a three seasons porch, and you're just doing your projects out there. Well, that open time is going to be even longer because mm -hmm. epoxy cures by what's called an exothermic reaction. It means heat's involved. So the more heat, the faster things cure. That makes sense. So less heat in the environment, slower. I've got to go grab some more glitter for you. Yeah. I'll be right back. Some more glitter. Yeah. Awesome. Some more glitter. Because this is our final final coaster, everybody. So this is our fourth technique that we're doing which is what i call the double glitter technique <laughs> double glitter it's intense it's very intense uh it's kind of a combination of two of the things that we've done already we did a little bit of glitter on the the vinyl inclusion with the uh thermal powder and we also did a really cool backing on it so what we're going to do this time mm -hmm. is we're actually going to put a bunch of fine glitter into this coaster and then i'm actually going to go back and put really heavy chunky glitter on the back of it. I'm already picking out the glitters. What are you feeling? Silver. Silver it is. So, so we've got a fine silver that's and if, a nice chunky silver. Right, wow. so you can see that this glitter is, it's really, really fine, right? Compared to the more uh, chunky glitter that we have here. We're gonna go darker, dark background. Taylor's choosing black. So this, this black glitter here is much thicker. So this is what we're going to actually mix into our epoxy and then pour into this coaster. And then this is what we're going to actually come back and sprinkle on the top. So let's jump into doing that. Sounds great. So I've got my epoxy here. For you. Thank you. This is always the moment. <laughs> bad, not bad, not bad. I do need, are you good with it just being I'm good like with that? it. Okay. I'm a rebel. I Here we go. It, so I trust it's you. all good. Already got glitter everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it. That's part of this. Part of this fun process is making a little bit of a mess. All right. So I'm going to show you this. I've added just a, a a good amount, not a ton. Again, glitter is the main thing that we're using in this coaster. It's the only thing we're using. So don't shy away from it here. Yeah, I like that. That's a good amount. I trust you. Thank you. Took a long time to earn that trust. Here we are. All right. There's my coaster. Here's my glitter. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it almost all the way up. Oh, silver was a great choice. Thank you. Yes, good call. All right. Now that is almost to the top right there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to, you could stop there. If you want a kind of a glittery translucent coaster, um, we've done those many times. We like those a lot, but yes. that's not what we're doing tonight. We're doing the heavy, the heavy glitter. 
So if you want, you know, we talked about this before. I know this particular glitter is light enough that it stays on the surface. Mm -hmm. If you're using a heavier glitter than this, yep. that's when you really need to, like I said before, wait till later in the open time to add that so that it's closer it's to the gel right time. Yeah. It's just right on top. But this glitter that we're using in particular is light enough. It's not going to suspend here. So oh, every time I make a big mess doing this. <laughs> it's okay. Every I have time. it all over my computer. Here we go. I'm going to make a big mess intentionally now. So I'm just gonna go back and forth Ooh. and I'm gonna coat the back of this coaster. So it is completely covered. All this glitter on this table will not be wasted. It gets sweeped up and put back into- Another coaster. Another coaster. Or what Look at that, you. didn't even use that much. Wow. So much is left here. Awesome, let me tap that before go. we have before a disaster it, on yeah, our Before hands it goes everywhere. And that, believe it or not, Taylor, that is it. That was our last yeah. coaster. We have not spent a ton of time and we've done a bunch of crazy stuff already. So we should show the good people what the results are, oh, shall we? Like this nice stack I have Let me here, take my perhaps. gloves off. Yeah. Oh, you were so prepared. I was. All right. Got one of each. So first off that inclusion coaster, this is what that inclusion coaster, wow. My hands are very warm, sorry. This is what that inclusion coaster ends up looking like. So it is actually a beautiful finish here. You've got those seashells embedded. I did more seashells on this one actually, but it is, I think this, uh, I don't wanna know. I don't know if this is my favorite. I'm not sure. Mm. I don't know, it's in competition here, but this is a really, really good one. So that's that beautiful inclusion coaster here. After we did the inclusion, we did that gl glitter vinyl coaster. That's what this looks like. I used the purple powder mm -hmm. on this one before. So you have that beautiful glittery top, that monogram, which I guess this is now backwards for y'all. But it is, is it, it right side up? To me. It I looks have great. The zoom pulled up, okay, good. So who good. knows? Who knows? So this is the monogram here. It's beautiful. And then this, you can see just like before, this is that backing layer of thermal powder in the resin here. So Another really cool composition, if I do say so myself, <laughs> that we love. And then you saw these a little bit earlier, but these are the alcohol inks. This is the alcohol ink without that white pigment. You can see it stays a little bit more on the surface, uh, but still does that really cool fanning and spreading effect that you see here. If you want to try different things out, what you can actually do is wait until later in the open time and play with that. And then this is the alcohol inks and the white. I keep lifting it up so you can see in the glare, but you can see the white kind of pulls things yeah. down. It kind of makes things a little bit more interesting. So big fan of that one as well. Ah, that, I think that's taken the lead for me. I think that's my favorite one. And then this one right here is that glitter backed one that you can see there's fine glitter on the top. And then on the back is that solid back. It really shows through. It does. From the top. Yeah. It does. I didn't want a transparent. If you had a transparent glittered coaster here, it's just a different look, mm -hmm. right? It's just not as kind of solid and stable looking here. So those are our four coasters. I'm going to throw this one over here because technically we did five. Yeah. Those are all the techniques that you can do. And this is just the beginning. This is just the start. We spent very little money, very little time, not a lot of effort, just a working. a little bit of glitter. Little, <laughs> Just a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit of glitter. And we've got these amazing coasters. This is a great place to start. If you're just getting comfortable with resin, if you're not sure what you wanna do and you just wanna get your feet wet. Also a great right way here. to experiment. Oh you know, yeah. Alcohol inks, we had never used before. No, so in like coasters, perfect size, let's try it out. Easy, and we probably did what feels like 40 alcohol ink coasters. <laughs> Not because they we were needed all to. Fun. Yeah, just because we were having a good time. <laughs> it was so, like science class. It was good. It was it was perfect. <laughs> Any questions, Taylor, before we kind of finish things out here? I have a question for yes. everyone watching. Ooh. Which is what do they want to see from Alumalite? Yes. Yeah. About resin, about our products. Do they have any more questions for mm. us? I'm in the chat, so if you do, everyone thinks they look very cool, by the way. Oh, thank you, Some everyone. Back on the coast. Thank We're you, everyone. Getting a round okay. of applause from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just wait a second, see what comes through. Any more fun epoxy tips you oh. have for people? Honestly, there's so so many great epoxy tips. It's 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 hard to even pick out of a hat. Uh, I will say, if you look at this and you say, "I love these. I want to start doing this," but I think I'm going to get bored of just doing coasters. Mm. Do not worry about getting bored. There is so much stuff that you can do from tumblers 
to coating canvases, all the way up to a, a lot of other products that we haven't even used here tonight that you can go get at Michael's from Illumilite that includes an amazing deep pour, right? A very thick mm -hmm. pouring mm -hmm. epoxy uh, that includes amazing ClearCast Plus, which is a UV enhanced uh, epoxy. And then honestly, amazing mold rubber, which is actually a silicone rubber that you can use to make molds of things and make casting. So if you had a figurine, you could make it completely clear or make copies of it. Mm. So the possibilities when you enter into resin and you enter into mold making and castings, it, it really kind of is endless, yes. truly, truly endless. And you can get it all at your local Michael store or at michaels.com. Mm -hmm. I can tell you from experience, it's a joy to go in there. We love a trip to Michael's. Love a trip we to Michael's. We walk down every aisle just because. Why wouldn't you? You know? You never know what you Grab need. some canvases, yes. some acrylics. You know, I'm not I'm not shy to grab a ball of yarn, no. you know? No. Check out the cosplay section. There Great are some section. sweet molds there. Get more vinyl for your cricket. Yes. You know, there's many options. We've got a few uh, few things people would like to see, which Ooh. I have some good news about. People would like to see us coat trays and flat objects. We have a class on December 11th. Ooh. Where we will be coating some flat objects. I won't tell you what, I don't want to give it away yet. Yeah, let's let the suspension- It'll be announced soon. Yeah, the suspense needs to build a little but, bit. But uh, it'll be Jordan and I, which is either an I'm sorry or a you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> to be, yeah, it depends on- Depending. Depending, <laughs> depending on if you like this class or not. That's yes. gonna be a fun class. Yes. I'm, I'm excited for that one yes. as well. I was excited for this one. I'm just as excited for that one, yes. so. We've got some questions also about- Let's do it. Can you coat rocks? Yes, we've got a YouTube tutorial. We do. We Check do have a YouTube, YouTube channel. There you go. Let's see what else. Um, can in. I use a, uh, alcohol inks with resin on other projects? Yes. All of them. Go for it. I did a, a fairly large uh, casting of a crystal and actually put alcohol inks into the top of that. Mm -hmm. And they, they dropped down. It was really, really cool. So I'm telling you, go to Michael's, get some amazing clear cast, amazing deep pour, amazing clear cast plus, amazing mold rubber, alcohol links, coaster molds. It's worth the trip. It's my, one of my favorite trips we can take. Yes. Yep. It's pretty great. What else? Other questions? Other thoughts? I think that's about it. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining all of us. A link to this video is going to be on Michael's website where you can continue to watch this. So if you miss something, don't panic. Don't write notes furiously and text your friends who are also <laughs> watching it. This is going to be available for you to view as many times as you need to. Yep. And as always, reach out to us. If you need help with anything, we're here for you. Illumilite.com. Right? You can call our customer service. We're here to work through your issues and your problems. And head over to Michael's. Make some gifts. Make some coasters Please and try do. some new things out. So, yes. Till next time, everybody. Take care. Bye. We'll see you soon. Thank you.